Man, these Kirby No Jump videos have been a real blast to make recently. The last two games we've attempted have turned out to be my, as of right now, two favorite Kirby games. Who knows, maybe we'll discover a new favorite today, as we look into the following. Is it possible to beat Kirby Squeak Squad without jumping? Our rules today are as straightforward as ever. We are looking to reach the end of Kirby Squeak Squad without jumping or hovering. To avoid utilizing those moves, we'll be repurposing the attacks from our copy abilities as jump replacements. Before we can do that though, we of course need to acquire a copy ability. So let's see how that goes. Prism Planes 1 nearly immediately throws this little hill in our way. Unfortunately, in this Kirby game, we don't have any multiplayer or dodge rolls to get us out of such a jam. That leaves us with no choice here but to jump. Same applies with getting over this square of land. There is more to this jump, though. You want to make sure you land on the right side of the Swaddle D when you do it. That way, you can slide into him to get the bit of height you need to clear the next obstacle without jumping. Unfortunately, after that, we're right back to resigning ourselves to jumping to get up this next cliff. But that finally brings us to our first copy ability, Beam. Which has no moves we could use in the stead of jumping whatsoever. A real shame because next up is the hovering tutorial, which we have no choice but to get past the intended way, adding two more jumps to our total. But after that, we run into Spark. It's also completely worthless to our cause. But after that, we come across fire. Now, unfortunately, we learned back in The Amazing Mirror that fire is of no use to us in these older Kirby games. That's because burn, the move that is actually of use to us in the later Kirby games with fire, actually is its own copy ability in the earlier Kirby games, burning. Or so I thought, but as it turns out, Squeak Squad actually is the game that saw burning subsumed into fire. That means with a simple dash and attack, we can use the move burn, which shoots Kirby straight forward as a fireball. This is obviously great for crossing large gaps, but can also get decent heights since with proper timing, you could do a burn again after running into a wall or the edge of the screen after your previous burn. You do, however, need an entirely flat surface to utilize such an approach. Luckily, a flat surface is exactly what we have on this next screen in the form of its edge. Getting the timing right is quite a pain, though. It's a relatively easy window to miss, and if you do, then you just breathe some fire pathetically as you fall back down to Earth, losing all of your progress. It is possible to scale the screen, though. Just really annoying and honestly kind of hurts your fingers to do so. Then the next screen presents us with this long pool of water to cross. Falling in here is a death sentence, as you can't use burn from the very slight escape from the surface of water you can obtain by slightly tapping up on the D-pad. So if we fall into this drink, we're stuck. Now burn is in theory good for crossing wide gaps. The only issue is that this one is ever so slightly too wide to get across in a single burn. And while you can activate another burn in midair after your previous one has run out, that requires a bit of time we don't have, lest we dive into the water below. Or so it would seem. But actually, with perfect timing, you can activate a burn just before touching the water's surface. We can then activate another burn after crashing into the opposite bank, thus getting us across. So, in the struggle of fire versus water, this time, fire prevails. Take that, Pokemon. And finally, the stage ends with another cliff to scale which is perfectly flat and therefore the perfect mark for fire. And thus ends stage one. Hopefully things get a bit simpler from here on out. Stage two introduces us to this game's bubble mechanic, which allows you to bring food and copy abilities with you for later use, when you find them inside of these bubbles. You can carry up to five with you and can even mix them for new random abilities or better food. Definitely the sort of thing that should prove very useful, I'd imagine. 
Anyway, the rest of Stage 2 presents us with the same sorts of obstacles Stage 1 did, all of which fire can clear. But then Stage 3 presents us with fire's kryptonite. Overhangs. <laughs> Yep, there is no way as far as I can tell to get the whole way up and out of this shaft using fire. And unfortunately, fire is the only comparability with a decent jump replacement we've encountered thus far. But remember, we do have the means by which to do a comparability mix at any time thanks to the bubbles. So let's try it out and see what we get. Tornado! Huh. Tornado has been an incredibly useful comparability in just about every game in which we've had access to it. And Squeak Squad is no exception. By turning into a tornado, Kirby effectively gains the ability to fly. Now that flight is a bit unwieldy to control since you have to constantly be moving diagonal in some fashion while you're in the air, but I'll tell you what, it certainly beats what we had going with fire. And it deftly gets us past these overhangs. And the rest of the stage. And uh, well quite a few others. Now the switch at level 2 stage 5 almost seemed unmakeable with Tornado due to all the wasted movements you get when you use it. But if you get the angles just right, you can just barely make it in time. These lava falls of level 5 stage 4 were a bit of a hassle. You're invulnerable as a tornado, so you actually can't just bounce off of them. What you do need to be cautious of is if your tornado runs out while you are colliding with one of them, then you do get hit and most likely lose your copy ability. You just need to be a bit cautious and stay near the middle when you feel your tornado is about to run out. The level 5 boss is easily the most difficult one thus far. It was a bit of a chip job as I was only able to get about one or two hits in with each tornado due to the boss's inconvenient positioning and frequent motion. Certainly winnable though. <laughs> Unfortunately, after finishing level 6, I discovered that I was lacking three of the star seals required to advance further. So I went back to the levels where they were, and actually got the large chests they were in. They were actually all quite easy to get, I just ignored them before, like a complete fool. Now on to level 7, and its annoying water level opening. It's not super difficult, it's just annoying because any hit you take in the underwater sections causes you to lose your cop ability, and generally in an irrecoverable fashion. All right, now back to tornado domination. Level 8 Stage 3 had this door in it, which was very annoying to get through, since you effectively have to get your tornado to end just above it to be able to get through it. Luckily, there's no real penalty for failure, so with a bit of trial and error, it can be done. Then the boss fight with Daroach is pretty easy. It does, however, upon victory, place you in a platforming area with the copyability Triple Star equipped, which doesn't possess any jump replacements. Luckily, 
we can still use Bubbles here to switch back to our oh-so-precious Tornado, which clears the platforming with ease. And then finally, the fight with Dark Nebula is no problem. So, is it possible to beat Kirby's Squeak Squad without jumping? No. It would seem to me that five jumps are necessary to beat Kirby Squeak Squad. But honestly, that's actually a quite respectable number, at least in my opinion. Overall, this actually probably was one of the easier Kirby No Jump challenges. Oh, and speaking of those, if you like this video, I have several more Kirby No Jump challenge videos on this channel for you to check out, including one on Kirby and the Forgotten Land. And of course, if you did like this video, please press that like button, subscribe, perhaps even share it with your friends. But anyways guys, until next time, I have been Supercraft, racing off to start production on my next video. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.